viewers of Biotechnica, this is Caroline Green. Today's topic is going to be top 10 tips for choosing a perfect PhD topic for your life science, very specifically. So PhD life science candidate, if you would like to go and start off your PhD, uh, any kind of topic, first thing you will do is finding a research topic. But at times finding a research topic is very, very difficult. So I'm going to give some 10 tips for you how you can actually choose a topic for your PhD. So let's talk about it. This is definitely going to be a great help. I'm going to tell few important points that you have to take into consideration when you are choosing any PhD topic. So the first topic or the first tip that I'm going to tell you is devote ample time to decide what you're going to do. This is very important because we know PhD is going to be almost three to six years, which is a very larger or a long run period for you. So when you're going in for a long run, you can take some time to spend a lot of time on choosing what topic you would like to go in for. What's your area of research? What topic you would like to go for? What is the problem or what problem you're going to address? So spend or devote a lot of time, ample amount of time to decide what topic you're going to choose. That's very, very important because after choosing a topic, you should not feel like you have chosen a wrong topic so spend a lot of time on choosing a topic and get to know during your analysis you need to know what is the present current research trends that's been going on whether this current research trends can be a longer run or it will become a future trends later also these two things you have to do initially when you're going to choose any phd topic because it's a long run be careful of choosing any phd topic and get to know the current scenario and the future research trends also as you're going to spend a lot of time, many students or many PhD aspirants used to make one mistake here. I'm going to highlight onto this. Many people love to do a research on the passionate field. Yes, many might be interested in reproductive health. Some might be interested in oncology. Some might be interested in stem cell research, some in proteomics, omics research. So there are many people who are interested in a very specific areas. But I'm going to tell you, not only passionate topic can work out. So always strike a balance between passion and practicality. This is very important because if you're not going to be practically thinking about your research, you will not be able to complete your research. So strike a balance between passion and practicality. Suppose if you're choosing a topic, you should know whether this can be practically the answers can be found or not because we does research by having an hypothetical question which nobody knows what would be the outcome of the research. But even though you should take up a topic that can be practically applicable. So choose a topic in the area of your interest. So how you can do that? So pick a project that pairs passion with practicality. Suppose, let me give you an example. So there are some people who likes reproductive health or oncology. In oncology, what type of cancer you are going to take into your research or when you're going to go for stem cell research, what disease are you going to target? So pick up a project that pairs with your passion along with it that can be practically becoming a research outcome also. So this is the most important thing. So always choose a practical topic with your passion. The second one is search for projects. You can look for projects with has a clear objective. This is what we're going to do in this project and it need to have a very unique outcome. It should be very different outcome also and you need to be able to complete within a stipulated period of time. It shouldn't be more than many years. You cannot sit for so long until and unless if you're not passionate enough, you can't go for some 10 or 20 years and sit and do the same projects again. And the next important thing I'm going to tell you is it's always good enough to follow your professor or your PI or your guide or your scientist advice, but make your own choices. This is very important because you're going to talk about your passion with a practicality. So you follow your advice of the professor. It's always good enough to follow the advice, but you can make your choices. So that's the most important thing when you're going to do. Just spend a lot of time on doing this analysis and choose something which you are passionate and that can become practical also. Next thing I'm going to tell you is now you don't know, you know that you are interested in cancer, but you don't know what type of topic to choose in cancer, breast cancer. What are you are going to do? Investigate. How you can investigate? Suppose you might have done a project during your master's. Uh, you might have done some gene cloning or you might have done some uh, oncology projects or you might have done in some other reproductive health projects or you might have done in stem cells or you might have done bioinformatics or many, many things you might have done in your project. 
can any of the old ideas can be introduced in the topic that you're going to do suppose if i'm talking about a person who has done a master's project on diabetes and now he would like to go in for cancer biology so can diabetes can be a correlation for a cancer also because most of the disorders as correlations with cancers so cancer multiply just because of lot of glucose content so can a diabetes and oncology go hand in hand so you can take up the old ideas that you have done in your masters and can it be introduced into the phd also and check out old resources if you have your master's thesis or anything or any review article you have written just take out that and just correlate and check so this investigation you're going to do when you have chosen a broad area along with a little bit of investigation next is the background check so this is what is very very important now you're going to spend a lot of time on looking for whether you have a knowledge in the specific area suppose let's take breast cancer so whether you have a knowledge in the pathways that takes place in the cancer biology all the pathways or if you're going for stem cell research you need to know all the signaling pathways do you know the theoretical knowledge of that specific area of interest or is there any technological gap that you have in the specific area of research what are the technology you're going to use in that one and the next is defining phd problem now we are going to find out what is going to be your phd problem so existing problem which has not been addressed you should take up a topic which nobody else have addressed so far so take up those kind of topic and and un analyze that and then you can proceed next one i have written is follow what you have to follow so suppose if you are interested in breast cancer just follow all the past research that's been done in breast cancer and the present research that's been going on here still now you have not chosen a subtopic you have just chosen a broad area okay next what you're going to do read a lot of dissertations and research articles now at this point you'll come to a conclusion what mechanism i'm going to target in breast cancer till this period of time you'll be having a broad idea now you're going to have the exact idea because when you're going to read a lot of dissertations related to the areas of interest you will find even one line can become a question so can this drug can be used for a specific treatment of this disease so you will find lot of questions popping up in your mind when you start reading a research paper so from there you're going to take up a very specific subtopic it's not a broad area of breast cancer you're going to take a very subtopic or very specific mechanism or a pathway you're going to choose and you're going to target it and read a lot of research paper related to the areas of interest so that you will have an idea what i'm going to do it and another important thing since you wanted to go in for a very specific area you have to attend conferences and workshop what's the benefit of doing it you will understand what's the scope in this field and what are the risks that you have to face if you're going to choose this specific topic if you're going to take a breast cancer or if you're going to target a very specific mechanism in it you have to know what is the scope if i'm going to take it what are the risks that i have to face it so you have to do a background check then only you can exactly choose a topic without this if you're not going to spend a lot of time on doing this analysis you will be taking a topic but you have to go a long run of 3 to 6 years so that time you cannot regret that you have chosen a bad topic the next one is be flexible this i'm going to tell you be flexible to consider several ideas have one question but you can get several ideas suppose you can just think yes whether any metabolic disorder can be correlated with very specific oncology research so focus on a key central research problem if you are targeting on chemotherapy that is your main purpose but is any other disorders causing cancer in this kind of diseases and what type of drug that i have to use so focus on the key question but you can take up several ideas and fixing one topic may not be wise you should not say like okay i'm going to do very specifically on this topic sometimes even other ideas can make changes in your topic as well there are deviations and a very good researcher will always expect un unexpected outcomes can happen sometimes unexpected things can happen but you have to be readily able to accept it and be open to new ideas if you get any new ideas you can take up those ideas and start considering with one topic but consider variations you can get many ideas the main purpose is solving some scientific problems that's the main goal of it even if you if many of them won't be useful for you you can take many ideas but most of them will not be useful at all but in the end you will be bringing yourself closer to the idea that you're going to do it so this is being flexible is very important not restricting yourself to one specific uh, thing is not a good idea and check for feasibility whether it's practically applicable or not which means don't take any big topics which are very difficult to solve within 3 to 6 years 
and no impractical topics no impractical topic take a practical topic and don't take over ambitious topics which are very huge don't have to take that and always look for some resources and facilities yes you might be interested in some of the topic where we don't have a facility in india do not take those kind of topic and struggle in finishing of your project so look for some resources whether this equipments are there all these facilities are available in india or in the research laboratory or research institute and are you going to do the research in one place or are you going to go and do research or get an analysis of certain things in different different locality so if that's going to be there it would be very very tedious for you to do so so look around all these things then you come on to one point because taking a research topic is okay you can take any topic but if you're not going to have a facility you would not be able to execute your research so talk to the guide your pi and understand the research trend that's been going on in the specific area of your research so that it will help you to ease up your research topic it will help you to actually understand can i take this research topic or it's going to be very very impractical for me to do it so so always check for feasibility the next one is choose a right one yes so this is the major important step that's why i'm telling take a lot of time to choose your topic don't be in a hurry and take up any topic and proceed on with your phd spend time to find out if what seems like a good idea is the right one okay it's seeming good idea to me but it is a correct one is it a correct one and always double check double check whether nobody else have already completed the same kind of research that you're going to do it this is very important do not ever carry out the same kind of research any time but it can be different mechanisms you can do it and always have an importance of your research and test potential ideas to see if they are possible not only one idea if any ideas are given by others then you take up the idea and check whether this can be implicated in this because potential ideas are always helpful for you and based on this one choose the right one next one keep your topic to the point i'm just telling breast cancer but it doesn't mean like breast cancer in breast cancer are you going to target a metabolism in that metabolism which um substrate and reactant you're going to target on what type of drug you're going to give to treat this how you're going to block the cancer multiplication or the replication or the reproduction everything you have to keep on to the point so big topic can be resumed with one central research question you should not be breast cancer i'm going to do a research it should be like what question i'm going to ask in that specific field of your interest the next one seek advice is most important thing when you're going to take any research topic this is most important i'm telling you seek advice seek advice from experts who are well versed in that specific area of your interest before deciding on to your doctoral dissertation don't be in a hurry and do take a topic and go in for doctoral dissertation and because this is a part of testing very very important accept problematic question if anybody is going to ask any problematic questions take that questions it's very important because if somebody asks you is it possible can it be implicated in your research write those question because sometimes those questions will tell you it's not possible also sometimes it can work and even that question can become your research topic also or a hypothesis also regular contact with your pi advisor is very very important because he can support you out after doing after selecting a research topic taking an ample amount of time never fed up with chosen topic if you're doing in a hurry and if you end up with a research topic of course you have to feel bad about it but if you have done these many analysis and if you have chosen a very specific research topic you should never fed up with a chosen topic because cards are all in your hands everything is in your hand so never fed up with the chosen topic so today i was very specifically talking about what are the tips that you have to have or to consider before choosing a phd topic for your life science spend a lot of time guys for your uh, phd research topic don't be in a hurry and take up any topic that comes in your way and always think about not only your passion whether it is practical and investigate whether your masters projects can be used for the upcoming one and always do a background check of look for uh, certain important whether you're good enough in the field and whether this problem has not been addressed or not and check with past research present research and read lot of dissertations and research articles and attend conferences so that you'll get to know whether this area has scope or whether this area has risk and then go being flexible have one question in mind but always accept several ideas which is going to help you and always take up feasible ones no big no impractical ones and always look for some facilities if is it possible and always choose the right one and keep your topic to the point better always seek an advice from the expert and never fed up with the topic if you have done these many analysis and you have taken this one so this is all about the topic that i've been talking about today so 
what is the tip that you would suggest for PhD students who are going to choose a topic? So put it in the comment section. Thank you all of you for joining.